Today we're gonna be talking about a very common question which I hear all the time from my students. What to go first, EQ or compression? There is no right answer to this, but you definitely can know exactly when to put EQ first or compressor first and today I'm gonna show you how to consider it. Don't forget videos on this channel is just light entertaining additional to really serious audio production course. If you want serious education I recommend to attend this course. It can be absolute game changer for some of you but it is better to see it instead of just hearing about it. So I offer you a trial class with current students. But now let's go straight to the point. We can work on guitars. We probably gonna go with electronic track, EDM track or more like hip hop orchestral track. Tr let's try this orchestral track. I mean, it doesn't matter really what kind of genre or music you work, it's all about amplitude of a waveform, frequency and phase. So genre honestly doesn't really matter if you work like really audio engineer where you consider like all technical processes and like how it affects us on your feeling. If you just after some like presets, I mean it's not really audio engineering. Real audio engineering is like really understanding all little moments so you really don't need to copy somebody. You really see molecules of audio and this is exactly what they teach people on the course, right? So you really shouldn't ask somebody how to place compressor or EQ. You should listen to and and, and you should understand how it affects us a tone of individual instrument and how this instrument works with other instruments in the mix. So this is actually the only way how to do it properly. So let's check it out. For example, you, you you hear this kick, right? Sounds like this. It sounds pretty muffled, it's pretty kind of uh, dark, and in the final mix it just sounds, if you don't put any process in here, this kick sounds just like really muffled and really boomy, it's not that clear in the mix, you don't hear a kick. It's not that clear in the mix, right? First idea what you have for processing this kick is like, let's make it more audible. So you put any equalizer, in this case I just gonna be using something like Digital EQ, Fab Filter Pro Q2 equalizer, it's pretty fine to show this example. So for example, I look for punch of this kick, so I want this kind of openness. Openness of a kick uh, usually stays around upper mid range and highs and slash or highs, so you should find proper balance. If I boost upper mid, if I boost something like 1.5, it's still a bit nasal, it's like kick, 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 you know, a bit like nasal sound. And it's still not that audible, so I probably would choose frequencies a bit higher. 3k, it's a nice click, so it's exactly click of this kick, around 3k. If I go higher or I use high shelf filter, it's also sometimes can be possible to use. Uh, you use high shelf, it, it can be still fine. But uh, this kick has this strange noise on the tail, you know, so after kick I hear this kind of a, like, noise in the end. So I don't want to bring this noise really, so I choose to use upper mid-range boost. So I switch back to bell mode and I boost frequency around I boost frequency around 3k. Nice and audible click, but according to mirror frequency effect, if you boost upper mid range, you kind of lose a bit of bottom end. So kick sounds right now thinner than it was. So definitely you want a bit tighter and a bit more like concentrated kick. Now kick sounds thin. So in the final mix, it sounds like small, small kick. So it's not that powerful. So now I just simply want to bring some energy from the bottom end as well. It's called low punch. So I look for low punch. You can actually even measure this low punch with frequency meter if you want. My favorite frequency meter is isotope ozone frequency meter. I just need to slow it down a bit. So as I can see from this spectrum, this kick has some sub frequency, it's not just like tight kick, it has like loosey bottom end from the sub range and it has fundamental tone. This peak is a fundamental tone and it's 55 Hz. Bottom right corner, you can see over here value where I point out with the mouse cursor. So we have mouse cursor around here. 
around this area and it says 55 hertz so fundamental tone of, it, of this kick 55 hertz so to bring somebody back to this kick i boost 55 not to touch too many neighboring frequencies and to bring some humming noises to the kick i make this boost like much narrower uh, so i really want to affect only on fundamental tone now if i engage my subwoofer here it can be just like exaggerated lows whatever i don't really want to spend time on it now so check it out what exactly happens so now we have this kick in the mix so now it has some bottom end some punch low punch and it has some upper upper mid-range punch which is a click like a snap of this kick so it's fine so we have something like that we actually can use sweep technique here to search through all frequencies to find some boxiness which also exists in this kick you also can do something like that so you go like depending on what kind of size of your room you have and depending if your walls are parallel you can have some standing waves uh, going on in your room and that's why depending on the size of your room at some frequencies of this kind you can find some room resonances so it also can be cut in the case if it's like too much for me it doesn't matter i'm mostly looking for this kind of uh, like more high boxiness this one sounds like basketball you know so like like poo, poo, a bit like too much of it so i cut it a bit It's not just really around 311, this problem like happened during the whole range between like 300 to 400, that's why I use relatively wide cut. Obviously when you cut some mid frequencies kick goes down in volume and you need to compensate some volume back. So I boost my fader a bit here. And now, let's say to make this kick tighter, like more pronounced, more kind of punchy, I decide on the compressor. What kind of compressor I want to use on this kick to make it, let's say, more emphasized. So, honestly, not every compressor works the, sa the same, right? And it's a big part of skills of audio engineer to choose a proper compressor. Proper compressor is supposed to be making something to your sound. For example, some compressors tend to uh, make tail of a kick tighter. It's uh, this kind of drum compressors, mostly like a SSL channel compressor. Some compressors tend to prolong tail, you know, it can be DBX1, 160. It can give you really good click, but tail still can be like very long and like very pushed uh, in, in brightness, in openness. So you can actually have like more humming noise in the end with some compressors. So in this, we learn it, by the way, on the course, all possible type of compressors and exactly difference between each compressor. Just imagine you will find out each nuance of each compressor ever existing. So we have all those plugins. I show different plugins. We even explain different manufacturer differences, uh, how 1176 from Universal Audio sounds, how uh, SSL compressor sounds from SSL, SSL from Universal Audio, SSL from Waves, SSL from Softube. So all these type of compressors explained on this course. So this is the whole thing. It depends on what kind of compressor you use and what you try to achieve with this compressor. For example, if I use some tight shortening compressor to make everything like tight and, uh, you know, like shorter tail, more punchy transient, like SSL channel compressor, in this case, I ask myself if it's already kind of clear and tighter I need, and if I want a bit more tighter sound, I can put the compressor as an additional after this EQ. So I put, let's say, SSL channel compressor. I can use something like from Universal Audio, let's say. I activate dynamics and compression module here. I use I use 3 to 1, let's say, really short release to make it as fast as possible, as open as possible sounding. I obviously use slow attack to allow transients to go through and only then I squeeze. And I compress, let's say, by 3.6 dB. I control output transformer emulation on this plugin because it's coloration emulated from real SSL channel strip, so it affects us on your additional compression and saturation. A lot of people don't realize this fader in this plugin, but I really don't want additional smoothing in tool, I actually want as open as possible sound, so I drop this fader down. 
So it's minus 18 decibels now. Minus 18 decibels is like zero dBVU on analog consoles. I would spend right now like three hours explaining all this gain staging. I'm gonna skip this moment and I compensate lost volume with digital output, which is this knob. As a tight compressor, I will be using a Neve 2254 version from Softube. So I activate this controller, Softube controller. I load in this SSL 9000 channel strip British Class A compressor, which is Neve 2254. It's actually modified, it allows you to change attack, which is nice because I can increase attack and have more snap to the sound. I activate this compressor, I use 3 to 1. I use really short release to to keep this kick as open as possible and I compress just over here I have a clipping I definitely shouldn't allow myself to have any clipping so I just compensate increased volume because this compressor has automatic makeup gain Okay, 10 seconds on my course and then we continue. So we have homeworks where you choose any project in any genre you want. And then we compare those projects in real time to the best sounding mixes and master tracks of all time. Just imagine, and if something wrong in your mix, I change it, I show why, I show you how I make decisions on choosing proper tools, proper equalizers, compressors, reverb, deessers, limiters, whatever, you know. And uh, you, I show how to how to really find proper settings. So you see it in real time. It's not just like some somebody's settings. It's exactly how you find proper settings exactly working for this particular situation. And in this case, you double check your skills because honestly, a lot of people, after six years of teaching, I noticed like people making really a lot of mistakes, even believing like they understand the topic. It's really commonly should be double checked if you understand how to really implement all stuff you know in real practical situations. So that's why most students believe this course has advantage over other courses just because of we really check real practical situations of your own projects. Let's continue. So now I apply this Neve 2254. I compensate uh, because this compressor has built-in auto makeup gain, so we compensate it back, we make this track a bit quieter, not to have any clipping on the output of this plugin. Okay, so I compress pretty a lot here, as you can see, 6 decibels, it's pretty a lot, you actually can go less than that, maybe 3 dB. Next thing, uh, what happens, we ask ourselves, what exactly this compressor brings to the sound of this kick? If you listen to this example right now very carefully, you can notice that without this compressor, kick just doesn't have this cutting through snap. It's still more or less tight, it's still more or less fine, but to be totally honest, comparing to other instruments like double bass, cello, piano, it's not that clear what exactly kick plays. Right? If you activate compressor, it has this kind of a snap, 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 snap. Especially when kick makes this kick kick kick. At this moment it's much more pronounced and much more tight. In this case you can put the compressor after equalizer just to tighten up what you already achieved with equalizer. Now just imagine what if, what if you started with the compressor. If you started with a compressor and you chose incorrect compressor for this situation, prob probably one of the most incorrect compressor in this case would be something like too fat and like warm and deep sounding compressor, which not, doesn't tend to tighten up everything, but opposite, making everything like smoother, like bigger, loosier. Some compressors of LA to A style or maybe something like Summit Audio, for example. Right, so I use right now Softube Sum uh, Summit Audio. Maybe you even chose incorrect settings, by mistake you chose fast attack, fast release, so you kill right now transient, uh, because compressor reacts on your sound instantly and it squeezes your punch. That snap disappears because attack is too short. When you listen to this kick in this mix, this kick sounds like right now very muffled, too fat, too humming, doesn't have tight sound, it doesn't have snap, it just sounds like uh, 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 uh. but previous kick sounded like 
kick, 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 but now it's like, uh, 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 you know. So it's not that kind of pronounced in the mix. In, and in this case, you ask yourself, if I want to put equalizer before this compressor or after. So you can have a couple of reasons uh, for placing this compressor before or after, right? For example, if your kick, for example, originally was very thin and very bright, you maybe wanted to make it like fatter and bigger. You put the Summit Audio to make your original too thin kick fatter and warmer. And then you put like standard equalizer to achieve some like pronunciation in the mix. In this case, you can start with a compressor. But opposite situation could be if your kick originally was very fat and muddy, you put equalizer first and you by mistake emphasize too much upper mid range. Let's say I boost 3k by 20 decibels. I don't compensate uh, this kick from the other side on lows and kick sounds too small and too thin like this. And now you say, oh my god, this kick sounds too small, too thin, why not to make it fatter and warmer, and you apply this fat and like humming and deep sound in compressor like Summit Audio. So you make this tiny kick a bit fatter and a bit warmer, darker. It depends on, it depends on what you had originally, what kind of source you had originally, and where you can direct this kick to sound is the final sound, right? If kick was too thin, you want a bit fatter sound, so you apply some fat sound in compressor to it. Let's switch right now to the snare. I get rid of my settings on the snare, and we're gonna try to do something with the snare. When I listen to the snare in solo, I kind of feel like this snare has a lot of bottom end, which, but honestly, main tone of this drum kind of not supposed to have any any kind of bottom end, right? Snare mostly it's more high sounding instrument. It's not supposed to have some sub frequencies usually. It can be just sub harmonic. It can be electronic sample and somebody blends some sine wave from the bottom end to make it like bigger, fatter. But sometimes in the mix it really doesn't work because you, in this mix we have so many low sounding instruments like like cello, double bass, I really don't want additional frequency conflict between kick, bass, dub, like cello, and plus even sub frequencies from a snare. So in this case, you start from equalizer, because you actually, before you compress it, and as you know, compressor can, can bring quiet parts of waveform to the surface. So compressor can make all these humming noises in the snare even more pronounced. So in this case, I definitely would suggest to go with low cut filter first, at least. And by the way, uh, let, let's check if my ear hears it properly. I'm gonna measure frequency response of the snare. Yeah, absolutely. As you can see over here, we have this uh, like uh, sub frequency in the snare, which is not actually a part of a main tone. So definitely I hear it. And I don't want these lows before compressor. I want to get rid of these humming noises. Then I compress without bringing all this hum to the surface. And only then after compressor, maybe I finalize sound of this compressor with specific shape on equalizer. Right, so let's do it. I put fab filter EQ on this snare. I low cut it, so I put frequency like around 90 hertz, let's say. I use low cut, I use, I should put point on this horizontal line, this is how this equalizer works. You put it here, and I choose the order, I use third order, 18 decibels per octave, because for my ear it sounds like traditional and musical, it's low cut filter of SSL 4000, G, black knob, equalizer, it's Neve 1073, 18 decibels per octave, so, so now it sounds clear. it's not a fighter for low frequencies anymore. So we keep much more space for the kick, for the bass. Now I put a compressor, so I want to make it tighter, for example, right? So uh, let's say I use 1176 compressor. I go with Universal Audio 1176. So how I set up it? I use as long as possible attack. In 1176, the longest attack is position one. Position one is the longest attack, so I allow snap to go through because I don't want to lose this nice punchy kind of part of the snare, and a uh, really classic setting on 1176 is, is 50 milliseconds. 50 milliseconds is position 7. And now I compress a bit to tighten it up a bit. It gives this nice kind of like crackling mid frequencies, you know, it's almost like in the sound. So in the final mix it will be much more pronounced and emphasized. It's like almost like overdriven a bit.
And now, when I compressed it, I, I decide what I want. Maybe I want to fit this compressor with specifically boosted frequencies. So in this case, I can try it, let's say, to emphasize 200 Hz, where fundamental tone of most snares is. It can be frequencies around 150, 125, 200. So it's called low punch of a snare. I make sure compressor will compress a snare with already low punch, making specific form of sound dynamically with it. If I don't want it, if I don't want to really shape sound before compressor, you know, it's like, okay, let's provide really stupid example, really stupid life example. You drink beer a bit before driving test. It relaxes you a bit, and when you drive, you kind of do everything right, you will be just a bit more relaxed, uh, because you just were like absolutely, absolutely scared before this test. So you basically allow yourself to relax a bit before driving and after you have a result. Or opposite, you go to the test, you really spoil everything driving because you're so scared and after the test, crying, you drink bottle of beer. Okay, forget this example because it's really bullshit. Uh, basically speaking, if I want this compressor to consume a bit more snap, let's say, of original sample. I can bring a, a bit of upper mid range and highs maybe in the snare, like this, and compressor will be consuming these highs. So in this case, we're not gonna have too much coming muddy mid frequencies, and compressor will be working mostly on the low punch and highs, like this. Maybe a bit noisy, let's make a bit less highs here. Right? So, in this case, you specifically try to achieve specific sound with a compressor, which processing specific source. Or opposite, you can go in the other way. You actually may like what compressor does to original sample just without that low hum. It sounds like tighter, you know, it doesn't sound like, like that kind of processed and washed out after FAB filter EQ. So it sounds a bit more strong, a bit more focused in this way, and after you just say to yourself this snare sounds a bit boxy, and you put additional equalizer here, so you grab, let's say, 9000 series SSL EQ from SSL, uh, and you, let's say, just want a bit less mid frequency, so you sweep through, through range to find where this boxy frequency in the snare is, let's say like this, Again, you know what, it's not like really what you should do here, it's just for example. So, you let's say boost all the way and you sweep. <laughs> 330, right? Like very boxy sound, like you grab cardboard box, you play some song on your cell phone, you put the cell phone inside of this cardboard box and you close it. So it sounds like... <laughs> something like this, right? So it's more closed. And then, uh, you now just cut this frequency like this. You just need one 2 dB only, just to kind of make sure this problem disappears a bit. I actually found out that 2 dB kills the body of a snare, it sounds too thin. You actually can combine low punch of the snare 200 a bit up to have rounder, like, rounder body of the snare, and a bit less muddiness around uh, 300 Hz. So, as you can see, from this point of view, it depends on what you try to achieve with the compressor. If your equalizer goes into compressor, you kind of are really not happy with the source and you want your compressor to process specific sound in source. In this case, you put the compressor afterwards. If you found really great compressor and it really works properly with your source, you, keep, you can keep compressor first and then afterwards you can adjust final sound to your taste a bit, you know, depending on how it works. For example, for example, if I chose some different compressor here, or incorrect settings on this 1176, for example, by mistake I put the tech pretty low. In this case, the snare doesn't have enough click, enough punch, snare sounds too polished. In this case, you may know you may want a bit more low punch and high punch, so you boost 200 more. 
and you boost a, a bit around like 2k to bring this punch back. So what it shows you, it shows you if compressor did something wrong for your sound, you put EQ afterwards to make it better in the other way, so you bring sound back to the sound you wanted. So it can be beneficial to put equalizer after compressor. So as you can see, the greatest part of it, another 10 seconds on my course. On the course we have full fat theory. When I designed this course, I wanted a course when people after this course never need to learn anything anymore. You know, I assemble all possible sides of view on audio, not just my own opinion, but like all possible techniques and theories possible related to audio. Very unique stuff, unusual stuff. We'll really go really deep in all possible audio engineering topics, including vocal tuning, sound design, music writing, uh, automation, phases, um, sidechain, uh, dynamic equalizers, deessers, compressors, multiband compressors. Uh, I even show you a list of all possible movements in mastering. You exactly write down what what kind of problem you can have, what kind of solution you can have, and why it's beneficial. So we learn not only what to do, but why to do it. Even from this video, right? Even if you understand how to tap a compressor, it's a one thing. But if you choose incorrect model of a compressor, you simply go in the wrong direction. So instead of uh, like chasing after somebody settings our goal on this course to learn really molecules of audio to really understand i train your ability to make decisions and to hear little nuances so all this assembled in one fat full course with more than 150 hours of this course this course is relatively affordable for the same amount of money you can buy just one pair of regular monitors or one average microphone but honestly it doesn't guarantee anything but my course guarantees results and you pay monthly so it makes everything much easier for you so conclusion for this video is next as you can see it all depends where you go so there is no really right or wrong uh, way how you put compressor before EQ or EQ after compressor. It all depends, right? You need to know all these little nuances. For example, let's say on this equalizer, you bring this 200 all the way up, what, what happens? It sounds very boxy very boxy it means if you're gonna have some lead instrument or, or vocal under this music you're gonna have a frequency conflict around 200 because the snare gonna mask all other instruments here so that's why it's not about somebody's settings you know it's all about like really understanding that this movement is incorrect imagine now if you have the snare and what if it's original sample and now you're gonna put the compressor on it no, it's not a good way. So probably you're gonna put EQ first, you're gonna cut this 300, and only then you put the compressor, because it will be proper source for the compressor to tighten it up. Or opposite, you have too much, let, let's say like 3 or 5k boosted on the snare, or it's already like original sample. This transient has too much snap and too much brightness, harsh brightness. You actually may not notice it if you're monitors are smooth sounding you know how many different monitors and headphones exist it's so big difference sometimes you you mix something and you believe everything sound right but people say that that you suck in this mixing why because people can listen to your music on a cell phone speaker which can demonstrate much more upper mid-range than your monitors so we learn all this little stuff so we kind of really train ourselves to understand all these little nuances and only then we really can make proper decisions what to do in what moment if you put the compressor first or if you put the compressor next that's it it's only light entertaining additional stuff to the course if you want real stuff check the course and it's great because it's for free one trial class if you're interested you're absolutely welcome to check it out one class to see exactly how we learn and how beneficial it can be for you send me an email it's on the screen